continuing our quest to visit Seoul's strangest cafes and today we are at a raccoon cafe where you can eat ice cream, drink coffee and also play with raccoons which is pretty unusual. I haven't seen the raccoons yet because I'm waiting for my food to show up. This needs to turn red and start buzzing but they do have a really cute puppy here so I've been able to play with him and I'm feeling pretty happy. Monster. Ooh, la la. So our food has arrived. We ordered an Oreo cookie pad bingsu and okay. this is called the raccoon pad bingsu and let's have a look at this. It's basically a mountain of shaved ice with um, cookie crumbs, Oreo cookie crumbs and whipped cream and more Oreo cookie and ice cream and chocolate syrup. So Check wow. That Oreo guys. Wow. Wow. Try that. And I'm so glad that Sam is filming right now so I can get the first bite. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the perfect, uh, you know, summer food here in Seoul because it is like we're melting outside. So how is that? Wow. That melts in your mouth almost like ice cream. It's almost like a watery ice cream when you mix all the ingredients. So good. Mm. So Sam, in between mouthfuls there, do you want to tell us about raccoons in Canada? Are they cute furry pets? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what's funny is where I grew up on Vancouver Island, they were considered a major pest, a major nuisance. Mm -hmm. I kind of grew up on a big property which led to the forest and the, the raccoons would come into our, our yard and, and mess around with the garbage mm -hmm. and sometimes they would attack like neighbors cats and things like that. So they. <laughs> They were really considered a, a nuisance, so it's kind of ironic to be coming here, and, you know, paying money to see one and, <laughs> and seeing these. But apparently, the ones here, are, you know, they're I think they're a lot smaller and yeah. they're gentle, and they, they look really cute. So I am looking forward to this, but it's kind of funny because where I'm from, the raccoons are considered a major pest. <laughs> One of them's white and is kind of friendly and curious <laughs> about us and the other one has just wanted to climb the whole time. It's yeah, literally it's really been climbing hard. all over the room. outing for you. Are you a raccoon lover now? I want to have a lot more respect for raccoons after this. <laughs> They're pretty cute. And so if you want to come here, you can go to Sukhumung University Station and it's exit 10. We're going to give you complete detailed information in the description box below. So check that out. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more quirky cafes and food videos from Korea, definitely stay tuned to our channel. Subscribe, give this, this video a thumbs up and we'll have more stuff for you soon. Some pretty unusual cafes and today we're going to be documenting one of those we are heading to Dong Cafe which is basically a poo cafe <laughs> yes. this isn't a cat cafe it's not a dog cafe it's a cafe dedicated to poo in all its shapes and forms so we're going to show you what that looks like sounds right up our alley It's kind of hard to miss with the big swirls of poo, but there it is. Let's go. What are you wearing? It's 
my new cap. I mean, come on, it just looks like all the other ones I've bought. And my food just fell off of my head. <laughs> this one's a little green. Maybe I had McDonald's last night. So Sam, you taught here in Korea for a few years. Tell us a bit about the fascination with poo. Well, there really is a bit of a quirky fascination with poo in Korea, and it's hilarious. I remember one of the funniest assignments I did with my students was I basically gave them a blank comic book strip, and they had to create their own comic using English. And this one, Kid created uh, basically, basically it was a catastrophe related to poo. A guy went up to the top of a building, he took a crap, it landed on the street, caused a big accident, <laughs> and then there was a news agency coming out to report the incident. So, wow. Yeah, it was a very, very sophisticated poo story, I have to say. I think <laughs> I gave him an A for that one. <laughs> Order has arrived. Tell us a little bit about what we got. Well, take a look at this uh, this thing of beauty here. This is my uh, French vanilla cafe. Vanilla. And you can see the some wonderful the intricate art, art design there. <laughs> and down below again, this would be my dung waffle. This is uh, basically uh, a dung shaped waffle covered with poo sauce on top. <laughs> with poo sauce. Or maybe chocolate. I, I hope it's chocolate or a Nutella. You know, it's 50-50. We, we haven't quite ascertained what it is. And you know what? The plate is pretty cool. This is basically a latrine or like a squat toilet. Look at that. Oh yeah, they've, they've, they've got this down here at this cafe. Yeah, so we're uh, eating out of a toilet. Sounds nice. about right. Oh, and you know what? what? If you come here at lunchtime and you order pasta or something like that, they serve it in a toilet bowl. <laughs> Why didn't we get that? It's too early <laughs> in the day, I early. suppose. We're, we're here the, for breakfast. We were the first customers inside. So, I bet this is your first time trying a poo waffle. I think it might be. I think it might yeah. be. Mm. <laughs> Dung delicious. Oh, no, no, no. Poo-tastic. Poo-tastic. No, that is, I think it is a chocolate or Nutella sauce. <laughs> it is really good. We hope. We hope. <laughs> so what are you having to drink? Mm. So I ordered a mango lassi, and it's actually really good. It almost tastes like the ones I was having in India when I was traveling there. So that's a really good compliment. Authentic, huh? Yeah, authentic. Nice and thick. Yes, stop distracting me. The waffle is slowly disappearing, so I'm going to dig in while I still have a chance. Ooh, you're gonna get a little bit Ooh, of banana. Look at there. that. It's like caramelized on top. There we go. Dungy goodness. Ooh. Poo waffle. Let's get that chocolate. So poo waffle reaction. You know what? It's really good. I can recommend this place. Come check out the poo cafe, guys. One in Seoul, why not? Okay, so we finished that fantastic meal, that poo-inspired meal. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the damage? All right, let's assess the damage. So if, as you see down here, it's 18,000 won, man palchon won, which as of today is 16 US dollars. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a little bit pricey, but yeah. we are in, in on in Sedong Street, which is a yeah. very touristy area of Seoul. Mm -hmm. And I thought the quality of, of the food and the drinks was fantastic. Yeah, also, plus you're paying for the experience. You really, really are. I mean, where else are you gonna go to a food cafe, guys? So, <laughs> yeah, I, I do recommend coming. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a very unique experience, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So we are going for something called uh, dongbang, yeah, which so it's is basically a poo-shaped pancake. Poo-shaped bread pancake. It's really hot, so I wonder if it's going to be chocolate or red bean paste. Mm, I still can't tell, but it's burning my mouth. <laughs> That is a poo shaped pancake filled with chocolate. Freshly made. Yummy? Mm -hmm. We just had to have it after eating at the, at the poo cafe, you know? It was mandatory. <laughs> Thank you. 
As you can probably tell, we're at a puppy cafe and I am very happy, surrounded by my new friends here. And this is the Sang San Puppy Cafe in Hongdae. Oh, yes, and I'm feeling the love. Look at this. Oh, I just like you. Yes, we're gonna be friends. But yeah, this place is so cool. It's mostly like smaller dogs, medium-sized dogs that you can play with and sit on your lap. And they're so sweet. They're all so friendly. And I'm just so happy we just got here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna kiss you after that. <laughs> no, you're not. You're gonna oh. use some. You're gonna use some heavy-duty mouthwash. Puppy. <laughs> Hi, Are we going to be friends today? Yes. 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 Y
It's really cool. So as far as quirky Korean cafes go, cat cafes are considered pretty mainstream even though we hardly have any in North America. Today we're going back to Sam's favorite cat cafe. So yes, let's head on the Koyangi Cafe. Yeah. No, it is not caviar. It's just chicken. Only chicken, not caviar. Chicken not, of the sea. Not prime cuts of tuna. So our drinks have arrived and they are the cutest things ever. Look over here. They drew cats. Cat art. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's a little kitty Look cat at in a cup. Yeah, so I got the iced chocolate and Sam got some kind of green tea. Yeah, mine was a green tea latte. Yeah, so and the way latte. it works to get in here is basically you purchase your drink and then you get to play with the cats. So the drinks were 8,000 won, which is about 7 US dollars. But I mean, it's pricey for a drink, but it gives you access to like 15 to 20 cats. Yeah, so. think of how many cats you get to pet. <laughs> yeah, so I'd say that's a bargain. So I almost feel guilty drinking mine, you know, with that cute cat face and all, but I am hot and thirsty, so. Is the art still there, mm. or is it slowly vanishing? Oh, it's really, really good. Yeah. Wow. Really strong green tea taste, but almost equally as sugary. Is it creamy? Creamy, sugary, and very potent green tea taste. It's, it's a really <laughs> nice latte. Making some new friends over there? No, she's not interested. How about this one? Looks like your kitty Tommy at home, yeah, huh? Yeah, we're calling this one Tommy because it's like my Siamese. Tommy! Tommy Gato! Tommy Cat! You will feed me. I'm cute and I'm hungry. I'm cute and I'm hungry too. Nom 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 nom. Did you get enough cat love? Well, I can never get enough cat love, but I mean, that was a fantastic afternoon on a hot summer day here in Seoul. There's nothing better to go into an air-conditioned room and play around with cats if you're somebody who likes cats as much as we do. Okay guys, so we found another really interesting cafe and it's hard to say if this is a new place or we're just noticing it for the first time because there's so much going on in Seoul. But basically it's a comic book cafe and yeah. it looks really cool. And I grew up kind of reading comic books, especially like Wolverine, X-Men and a whole bunch of others. So we're going to go and check it out and see what they have in store. <laughs> So we have made it, it is up on the second floor 
And what caught our attention is basically the cubicles where you can read comics. Yeah. And the bright it, fuchsia it, color. It looks like it has a really comfortable like space inside, so we're yeah. gonna check it out. It's chill. So first up, we change our slippers, leave our shoes. Yeah. We grab some sandals and lock this. This place is so cool and they have so many comics to choose from. The only problem is that they're all in Korean, so if you can't read Korean, you're just gonna be here admiring them and drinking coffee. Alright, Sam, time to crawl into your little cubby hole. Yeah, it's up here. It looks cozy. Looks super cozy. And we have a view. And look. A little pillow buddy. Hey pillow buddy. Ah, All right, so basically this drink here is the price of admission for an hour. It's 4,500 won. So in total we paid 9,000 won, which is a good chun won. And let's try the coffee. It's an, an Americano. Iced coffee. Iced Americano. Ooh la la. Mm. It's good. It has no sugar added, so it's healthy. Oh crap. Well, if coffee is, if you can consider coffee healthy. <laughs> <laughs> So Sam, having lived in Korea for a few years, how good is your Korean? Let's be honest. You know, it's pretty good related to food and small talk and, and basic exchanges, but I didn't learn nearly as much Korean as I would have liked to. So, so can you read the comics? I can, can you read pick it up out loud. Anything. So here, this is Gajune, uh, Kyo Ya Rago, Hamnida. And then over here we have, <clears throat> I think that's Yaho. All right, so, so I guess we're gonna be looking at the pictures we'll more than pictures. We <laughs> so right now I'm enjoying my iced coffee, but if you get hungry, they actually have a menu up here. They have like ramen noodles and dumplings and different yeah, they things have to choose from over here. Yeah, and of course, in case you need to charge your cell phone, because everyone is always holding their cell phone, you can plug it in and you're good. So what comics did you read as a kid? I grew up reading Archie comics and Asterix in French. Those were my two go-tos. So I have no idea about manga. I don't even know if this is manga. I just don't follow Korean or Japanese comics because I can't read them mainly. So yeah, I'm just looking at pictures over here. Pretty pictures. Who's your new friend? I don't know his name, but he's very comfy. He's just We're just hanging out together. You guys look good together. Yeah, we do. <laughs> So the comics I grew up reading were mostly Wolverine and X-Men. Mm -hmm. So I'd say like around nine, when I was nine to 14, I was really into them. Almost every week or month that they would come out, I would go get the latest edition. But then I sort of stopped. But the, the Wolverine and X-Men movies that have been coming out, oh man, I've been loving those. Especially anytime they're, they're featured like on an airplane or something, I'll watch them even if I've seen them once before. So this is the most amazing, like, full-body hug pillow I've ever seen. Put this around your neck, then you have something to hold, and you can even, like, wrap it up. <laughs> you just hit your head? <laughs> you can wrap your leg up, and it's like, you feel oh loved by the pillow. I feel loved by the pillow. Is that possible? It's like, oh, embrace. <laughs> So since we can't read comic books, we were brought magazines to look at. I got Vogue, Sam and brought GQ. GQ because it's Sam is on trend. Guy. Sam just follows the yeah. latest fashions. Absolutely. Don't look you? at this. This is going to be my new, uh, my new shaving kit. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine me using that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nasty old razors. That's more your style.
final thoughts final on the thoughts. comic book cafe. That was a really cool place. I think yeah. that's actually one of the more chill kind of like uh, themed cafes we've been to in Seoul. I just yeah. felt so relaxed there. Even though we, we actually didn't read that too, too much of the comics. No, we, you know? we were just whispering, trying not to be the loud North Americans there. You know, like, shh, keep it quiet. Yeah, we were just yeah. talking, it was enjoying so cool. our... Like they're playing soft, jazzy music, and it's so cozy in there. Yeah. So and it was nice to see that the cafe was getting a lot of business. They had a lot of people there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's a cool place. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. One in Seoul. So we are continuing our search for quirky cafes in Seoul, and today we are at Thanks Nature Cafe. This is a sheep-themed cafe in Hongdae, so I think we're just going to enjoy drinks and maybe play with sheep afterwards. So when you're visiting Thanks Nature Cafe, basically it's the same as the other like animal and pet cafes in Korea. What you do is you order a drink or you have a piece of cake or something like that. And that's basically your admission and that gives you access to the sheep. So. Yeah, so the drinks are a little bit pricey. You paid 5,000 won for yeah. tea. For my tea. And yeah. how much was yours? And I also paid 5,000 won for pomegranate soda. So yeah, but we get to play with sheep. I mean, when else and where else are you going to do that? Exactly. So we actually tried coming here during the summer months back in August, but one thing to keep in mind is that it gets super hot in Seoul, like almost 40 degrees with humidity, and that's not healthy for the sheep, so they actually take them away. I've heard they go to a farm or something. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure how it works, but they're not here during the summer months. So if you visit, Make sure it's in like the fall or winter spring. Winter or spring. Yeah, I don't even know if they would be around in winter when it's snowing. So it's kind of a seasonal thing. Okay, so we're going to meet Lulu and Lala. Those are the names of the sheep, so let's go say hello. So Sam, is this your first time seeing a sheep in real life, in the flesh? Come on, I've seen them before, but I've really? never like, got to like, pet them and be this close. Okay. But you grew up with sheep, right? Yes, I had four pet sheep. And that was in Cordoba? Outside yeah. Of Cordoba? We used to chase them around, and once I fell in their poop, it was so gross. We were chasing them around, you know what? and I was wearing a really nice dress, and I like tripped. And I was like completely smeared. It was so nasty. That is something that we definitely do. That's, That's a very Audrey memory. Very Audrey thing to do. <laughs> so that is a wrap from Seoul Sheep Cafe. Yeah. It's a pretty cool time. I mean, where else do you get to hang out with sheep, interact with them, pet them? So I would I come back. I mean it was fun. It was fun. Anytime I get to hang out with animals, I'm having a good day. So I'm a little biased that way. But if you do like animals, check it out for sure. Alright, see you next time. Today in Seoul, we have found a little slice of Germany. We're at a cafe called Blüte, which means blossom or bloom. It's all about flowers. They have a beautiful garden and flowers and vases everywhere. Oh, They just brought us the menu, even though we've already ordered. So, <laughs> we're basically waiting for our food. We're getting some tea, some cake, and some beer for Sam because it's a really hot day out. So hopefully that'll be here soon. is this? Yeah. Sam got a flower with his beer and pretzels. First time to ever have a flower with my beer anywhere in the world. So 
<laughs> what a special day, huh? <laughs> Anyways, we've I've got a Guinness, which is awesome because like guys, this August has been unbelievably hot in yeah. Korea. Yeah, like, Korea is doing its best impression of pretending it's, it's somewhere in Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're melting here. Melting every day, so we're just ducking into cafes as much as we can. So a cold beer is really appreciated. Yeah. And this is brewed in Dublin, which is awesome because I've been to the I've been to the storehouse in Dublin, the Guinness storehouse. Mm -hmm. So let's get it going here. Yeah, they had no German beers, even though this is a German themed cafe. So yeah. That's well, that's okay. Them. Guinness is a nice. The Irish. Guinness is a nice, is always a nice beer. And we got pretzels too. Cheers. Let's try that. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the real thing. That's the real <laughs> deal. Guinness. Yeah. And what did you end up ordering? I got myself some iced mint tea with lots of ice cubes. <laughs> That's nice, it's refreshing. No sugar added whatsoever, very natural. Also, they gave me flowers. That is such a nice touch. Look at that. Wow. So cute. Almost wish you could take them home, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if you can. And that's a nice looking piece of pie, I, I have know. to say. Two forks, so I suppose I will share. This is a lemon tart. Okay. Lemon cheese tart. Yeah. Almost looks like the bottom layer is, is kind of like a cheesecake or something. Is it? Mm. It is? Yeah. It's like cheesecake and lemon meringue pie rolled into one. Oh man, like that would be good. The, cheesecake, the top is pie. I'm, gl I'm glad you're sharing. Going in for a second bite before I even have any. Good stuff? Another pretty cool cafe to add to the list of unusual cafes in Seoul. The prices were a little bit steeper than other places we've gone to, so between 7,000 to 9,000, which is seven to nine dollars for a cup of tea or a coffee. But another thing worth mentioning is they have a little workshop in the back of the cafe where you can learn how to make flower arrangements. So that's something to keep in mind. Fancy. Yeah. And what I really liked about this cafe was the quality of the cake. Mm -hmm. Top-notch cake, was guys. Good cake. Yeah. filming at the Hello Kitty Cafe in Seoul. Now personally, I'm not a huge fan of Hello Kitty, but Sam loves cats, so I figured, oh. Hello Kitty, a pink cafe, you gotta, this would be perfect You've got to be him. kidding me. <laughs> every, every time we go to a cafe like this, I, I think in my head, okay, I'm building up points towards a baseball game. This is all for Sam, all for you. <laughs> pink cafe with fluffy kittens. Let's go order. So for our drink we ordered the green tea latte and if you take a look down here it has Hello Kitty space on it. Imagine that. Oh, it's almost too there cute to she mess is. up. With her little bow. Let's see how it tastes. Can't believe you're sipping on the kitty's face. The Hello Kitty's face. Is it good? Wow, yeah that is good. Yeah, it's like a rich, milky green tea. It's really nice. Mm. Nice and frothy? That's nice. I'm trying to save her face. <laughs> what about, like, can you really taste the green tea or? Definitely, yeah. It's good. Sam, it is so funny to be filming you with a pink background right now. <laughs> Super pink. It's like bubblegum pink. But anyways... How many baseball games? <laughs> Only Four? one. Five? One. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna try the cake now. Okay, so this is uh, very pink, very Hello yeah. Kitty, and it is, I think it's supposed to be raspberry yes. flavored, so let's try that. A raspberry shortcake. Mm. You know what? That's good. Yeah. You really do taste the raspberry, yeah. It's a nice and light cake. It's it's very uh, fluffy. Very, it yeah, very fluffy, and it kind of just like disintegrates in your mouth as soon as you take a bite. Yeah. So. And if it sounds loud in here, it's because today is a very popular day with children. 
And they are just loving it here. They are loving Hello Kitty. They're loving Hello Kitty even more than us. <laughs> Hello Kitty Cafe is just as pink as you can imagine. Pink toilet seats, pink walls, pink everything. So we're now heading inside the Hello Kitty gift shop. Let's see what we find. Sam, I think that's probably enough Hello Kitty to last a lifetime, right? Yeah, but you know, it, it was kind of cool. It was it was very pink and very decorated inside. And if there's one thing that I can really appreciate is that they didn't jack up the prices too high just because it was a Hello Kitty cafe. I've noticed other theme cafes in Korea, like you pay quite a bit more because it is a theme cafe, but those are pretty much standard prices. I think we paid about 4,000 won for our cake and also 4,000 for our coffee. So that's, uh, that's pretty normal. All right, so another quirky cafe to add to the list, visit the Hello Kitty Cafe if you're in Seoul. Time for the drinks in Lego. I think you volunteered to pick them up, right? Alright, so for today's outing, we're at the Lego Cafe. How excited are you? Yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, I grew up playing with Lego. So they were probably one of like the, the four key toys that I had growing up with. So Lego was one, mm -hmm. G.I. Joe's was another. WWF action figures <laughs> okay. and X-Men toys. All so right. those were like the four, <laughs> the four that I really remember growing up with. So yeah, we're basically at, a, at another quirky Korean cafe yeah. and we've ordered drinks and it comes with a set of Lego which we can play with for an hour. So yeah. we're just waiting for all of that to arrive. So we got to choose them from this shelf over here and we chose a pirate Lego yeah. set. Arr. Pirates are beady eyed pirate. Here's my patch. <laughs> Okay, so our drinks are here and so is the Lego. So we got the Lego special which comes with two drinks. I'm having lemon iced tea, Sam is having peppermint, and we also got to choose one Lego set to play with. So that's over here. P -p -p pirates. And it is pirates. pirates. Open this one up here. Look right Let's there. See. It's really cool. Look at all the pieces that we Ooh. have. This looks complicated. I'm not sure if we can build it in an hour, but we're gonna oh, try. Oh man, that's, that's not the goal. We're just gonna have fun making our own things. <laughs> I don't and wanna... here, I guess the instructions are here if you wanna follow yeah. the model step by step. We also have, there's we have Lego figures. Show us those, they're yeah. in a little baggie. These are so cute. Check out this guys, these are awesome. Pull those into your hand. I hope there's a pirate princess. <laughs> there's a little guy with a bow and arrow. An evil man in a cape, pirate with a sword, this will be fun. So I clearly didn't look at this carefully enough because it's not pirates at all, it's hobbits. We're playing with hobbits, Sam. Yeah, but okay, these hobbits kind of look more like warriors. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what you making over there? Well, I think we've encountered a little bit of a dilemma because I've decided to follow instructions to build my hobbit cave and Sam is just stealing my pieces and being creative over there. Uh, I'm making a spaceship. But now I don't have what I need. Well, you can, you can, why don't you improvise and make something creative? I guess so. So what are you actually trying to make here? Um, I'm building the hobbit cave, the oh, hobbit okay. house, yeah. It's gonna be luxurious. <laughs> So Sam here is quite proud of his creation. Tell us, you know what, what have you made? This is my spacecraft. A hobbit spacecraft? A hobbit spacecraft. And we, <laughs> I basically said, forget about making anything related to hobbits <laughs> or pirates. This is my spacecraft. Wow. 
So those are your astronauts with swords. Yeah, this is and this capes. is the supreme commander, and mm -hmm. these are his his uh, two lieutenants. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're on they're on a pretty serious mission over here. And they're using bows and arrows in space. Bows and arrows, and these are the the two guns on on the ships. So. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. I'd like to see them you in would, battle. You would not want to mess with this ship. Put it put it that way. <laughs> And Audrey, being the competitive person that she is, required an extra 15 minutes to make no. hers. <laughs> yeah. Like an extra 5 minutes. <laughs> no way. Anyways, what did you make? Show us yours. So it's kind of like a fortress and it's not very stable because I didn't have enough pieces. It's since cool. Sam stole them to build his spaceship. You know what? Yours is, yeah. yours is more complicated than mine. I, I, I don't know if my spacecraft could take, take out your fortress. Yeah. I don't know. It's my hobbit fortress pretty impressive okay so time for overall impressions from the well, Lego cafe sadly it's time to go and uh, overall impressions were I really liked it here it has a really chill and quiet vibe like they're playing nice soft music and yes. it's, it's not too busy or crowded here so it was really relaxing compared to some other uh, quirky cafes we visited in Seoul and it was fun to play with Lego again. I mean, that is one toy that I think even as an adult you can still enjoy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've seen other people here uh, play as adults playing with Lego. So. Yeah, that's true. There are no kids here. It's all adults playing <laughs> yeah. with Lego. Which is a bit of a surprise for me. Maybe on other days there's a lot of kids. I mean, mm -hmm. it is it is a quiet... Uh, is it Tuesday or Monday today? Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a quiet Tuesday in the, in the early afternoon. but. I, I, yeah, that was one thing that really surprised me. It's mostly adults playing. Yeah. But uh, and I guess I suppose we fit into that category too. <laughs> but yeah, if you're if you're in Seoul, definitely check out this place. I do like it. And they have a huge selection of yes. Legos. Yes. So you can live out your Lego fantasy. Lego story time with Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my one of my friends growing up. He swallowed a, a quite a big piece of Lego and he ended up pooping it out. So just thought I'd share that. 